Hello, and welcome to Subversive Radio. I'm your host, Keith Giles. Thank you for listening. Um, I want to do a podcast. Uh, it was very difficult to come up with a title. I just decided to call it Let's Talk About Israel. Um, I think this topic is important, and um, what I was realizing is is that Lately, I have been involved in a whole lot of online discussions, mostly on Facebook, a couple of times on Twitter, uh, sometimes on my blog. Um, And um, certainly because of current events, um, the whole idea of Israel has come up. And um, what I've been noticing is that, and not that this was a new thing to me, I've kind of known this for a while by experience, but what I've noticed is, is that it's really, really hard to have a conversation about Israel with most Christians. And so, I don't know, I kind of just wanted to talk about that uh, in a way and talk about not only why is it hard for Christians to talk about Israel and have a a, um, productive conversation about Israel with one another, why that is, and also what's at stake um, and, and does it really matter. So I guess, first of all, I want to say, um, or talk about, you know, why is it so challenging for Christians to have a conversation, a productive conversation about Israel? Because I I have all kinds of conversations with people about Israel um, online. Pretty much daily, I'm having some sort of comment or back and forth conversation with somebody online about, um, about this whole topic of Israel. And so I think it's I think it's difficult for Christians to have a conversation about this for several reasons. First, I think um, because there's a long history uh, of anti-Semitic um, rhetoric and um, what's the word I'm looking for um, stigma, I suppose attached to anyone who would ever dare say anything that wasn't positive about the current nation of Israel um, and their identity and what they do or don't, uh, you know, what what they do or don't own, meaning the land, um, what they do and don't have a right to, um, you know, those kind of things. So, but the, so if anybody ever tries to say anything, um, that doesn't go along with the very pro-Israel, um, Christian Zionist, Christian, you know, Jewish national, um, rhetoric, you just get hammered, you know, um, so, And they just immediately assume you hate Israel. Uh, I saw that today on somebody's, someone on Facebook had posted something very, uh, very pro-Israel. Not that I'm against Israel. It's not like, oh, I see somebody saying something that's pro-Israel and I get angry. It's not that. It's that it's usually said by mixing together stuff that isn't true. Um, And and it, 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 it begins with some assumptions that are not, biblically factual or or correct to what the Word of God teaches us and tells us. So, anyway, I think it's hard for Christians to have a, com- a productive conversation about Israel. Again, first of all, because people assume that if you disagree with their Zionist, Christian, you know, Israel, you know, uh, Christian Zionist views, uh, if you're not pro-Israel, then that must mean you hate Jewish people. And that isn't true. That isn't the case. I don't hate anybody. I'm not against any any nation, any ethnic group, any people groups. I don't. Uh, I'm not. You know, I'm not against those kinds of people. And now, yes, there are people who are out there who do hate Jewish people, and yes, they do. Um, you know, speak against Israel. But just because you speak against Israel doesn't mean you hate Jewish people. So that's one reason why it's very difficult. I think. Um, so, um, it's also difficult, I think, for Christians to talk about Israel, 
uh, because dispensationalism so completely permeates the American church today. And uh, some of the comments that I saw today on Facebook, for example, that I felt compelled to attempt to correct, or at least to speak some truth to, and of course I failed miserably. Um, uh, but they, they totally, you know, rise out of a dispensational, um, uh, an assumptive dispensational viewpoint. So in other words, the assumption is that the truth is on the side of the dispensational mindset, which is just, again, not the case. Um, I've even just, I just finished doing like, I think a four part, at least a four part podcast series here. Uh, and you can find that on my blog or on my Spreaker account. Um, oh, you know, uh, refuting dispensationalism because I, because again, it's something I think is so important that Christians understand uh, what is dispensationalism, where it came from, the fact that it started the same year that Joseph Smith um, came up with you know, dreamed up his Mormonism uh, religion. So it's as old as Mormonism. That's how new it is. Um, which means before 1830, before Darby uh, dreamed up this sort of connect the dots form of theology called dis dispensationalism, for 1,830 odd years, no Christian believed this. And now the weird thing, though, is that today, in 2014, it's very difficult to find a Christian who, who doesn't believe this, or at least doesn't believe that there is no other way to believe. In other words, they may not necessarily slap the table and say, I absolutely believe this is the truth. It's just they've never been taught anything other than dispensationalism, so they don't know if they believe anything other than that. Um, anyway, but that, that's also what makes it very difficult for, I think, for Christians to sit down and have a conversation about Israel today. And what I mean by that is that when a dispensationalist says, pray for Israel, or I support Israel, or pray for the peace of Israel, or, uh, or accuses you know, me of hating Israel, obviously we're not using the same terms. Because when they say Israel, they mean ethnic Jewish people who live currently in the nation of Israel. But when the Bible uses the term Israel, it most specifically does not mean ethnic people descended from Abraham who are circumcised, uh, who are practicing ethnic Jews who trace their lineage to the, the descendants of Abraham. Jesus and Paul both uh, make the point that that doesn't make you Israel, that what makes you Israel ultimately is being in Christ. And that those who are truly Israel are those who are in Christ, and those who are uh, so. If you if you reject Christ, you've rejected Him and the Father. You have neither the Father nor the Son if you reject Christ. So, let's go back to the ethnic nation of you know the, the secular state of ethnic Israel uh, in the Holy Land. They they reject the Christ as the Messiah, and therefore they reject the Father as well. Anyway, um, but that's what makes it very difficult. Dispensationalism is like this major um, cornerstone of, of understanding that has to first be broken down and, and refuted and explained before most Christians in America can even begin to you know, even use the same terms in the same way. Um, and, and I think the other, the other problem is that it's a very emotional issue for a lot of Christians. A lot of Christians get very, very emotional um, when it comes to having a conversation. Like, I would love, and I guess to be fair, it's probably happened a couple of times. I think I've had a few conversations with people online who disagreed with my position, but were able to have a sustained conversation, uh, sharing scriptures back and forth, explaining what we mean back and forth, uh, really, you know, having a really productive conversation without getting emotional, without accusing the other person of being anti-Semitic, without accusing the other person of being a heretic, etc. I probably have had maybe two conversations like that in the last few years. Most of them, though, don't go that way. And so anyway, normally, you know, I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't waste my time 
uh, even tackling a topic like this, something that's so, you know, prickly, something so uh, polarizing, something that people get so upset about, you know. I mean, if you want someone to unfriend you on Facebook or block you on Facebook or, or unfollow you on Twitter, it, this is it, you know. Don't you dare post something that's not pro-Israel or, man, boom, you are gone. <laughs> you, are, you are just out of there. And again, that's fine. Uh, it's not like I haven't unfollowed some people for being too, you know, pro-Zionist. So uh, I, I guess I understand that. Uh, if someone's just way too in the other direction. But anyway, again, I normally wouldn't even bother to, to broach this subject, but I, but I do bother uh, to, to talk about it, to do podcasts about it, to write blogs about it, to share other people's blogs and podcasts about it. Um, not because I like controversy, not because I like stirring the pot, not because I like a good argument, because frankly, I get really, really tired of this, really. Um, but frankly, God won't let me, and I really mean that, you know, because I have tried to walk away from this. I've tried to give it up. I've tried to say, you know what, never mind. It's a wasted, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lost cause. It's a, it's, it's a losing battle. There's no point even going there. Why even try? And yet, uh, it just keeps coming up. And I don't mean that people just keep bringing it up on Facebook, because that's going to happen. That's always going to happen. Uh, what I mean is that the implications of not understanding um, biblically what is Israel and biblically understanding, uh, you know, these different things. Th this is basically why I, I uh, you know, at least attempt to uh, tackle this subject because I think there are several things at stake. And that's the other point I want to discuss. What's at stake? In other words, if if we decide, you know, we're going to take up this battle, what what are the things that we may lose and what are the things that we may win? So what is at stake? Well, I believe there are several things at stake uh, where you stand and your understanding of what the scriptures say about Israel. Um, I think the first one is the whole idea of Old Testament and our relationship to the Old Covenant and uh, what the New Covenant relationship with the New Covenant reality looks like, okay? So, for example, um, if you read something in the Old Testament scriptures and under the Old Covenant, and then you read something in the New Covenant, and they appear to conflict, which of them trumps the other. Which, which of them should you follow? And I've, I've stated it this way before, you know, for a Christian, should we be, should our, um, should our blueprint be for life be Jesus and the Sermon on the Mount? Or should our blueprint be the Ten Commandments and the Law of Moses? And see, again, now this is why I think this topic is worth wrestling over. Because, frankly, most Christians, especially in the West, in America specifically, would say that they live their life by the Old Covenant, by the Law of Moses, by following the Ten Commandments. And most Christians believe that the standard of living, the moral compass uh, for, for us is the Old Covenant, that God's given us nothing else except the Old Covenant to dictate how we should live our lives. And yet... Moses said that one was going to come, a prophet was going to come after him, uh, and that we should listen to him. Peter said in the book of Acts, uh, after Jesus had been crucified and, and risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, and the Holy Spirit had fallen, and Peter began to preach, he, he recalled that Moses had said that, and said that if they didn't listen to Jesus, they would be cut off from their people. They'd be cut off from Israel. Um, so for a Christian, it's the Sermon on the Mount. This is why Jesus said, you have heard it said, you know, uh, don't commit adultery. But I say to you, don't look at a woman lustfully or you've 
or you've broken that commandment, right? So Jesus notes the difference. Jesus is the first one to say there's a difference here. There's a conflict here. There's a discrepancy here. You've heard this, but I'm telling you something even greater. Okay, so for a follower of Jesus, it's Jesus. (laughs) It's not Moses. So that's one thing. The other thing is um, really just a freedom from a legalistic way of life. I have friends. I know people uh, who are Christians, but who have just gotten sucked into this whole thing of practicing the Jewish feasts and following these, you know, uh, festivals and practicing Jewish traditions and using Jewish words and, you know, calling Jesus Yeshua. And, you know, and again, there's nothing really necessarily inherently wrong with those things if, and here's the caveat, here's the if, there's nothing wrong with those things if those things in your mind are all about pointing you back to Jesus. To Jesus. Because mostly what I see, and again, this is just what my experience has been, and the people that I've talked to who are kind of the Christians that I've talked to who are wrapped up in this, for them, it's actually not about being closer to uh, pointing them to Jesus. It's about making them more Jewish, as if the more Jewish they are, the more like God they are, or the more like Jesus they are. And that's a subtle difference. In other words, the goal is to be more Jewish, as if being Jewish is to be, what, the favorite of God, the chosen of God. But is that what the New Testament tells us it it takes to be considered favorite of God or chosen of God? No. What does the Bible tell us? What does the New Testament scripture tell us? Those who are in Christ are, are, you know, the seed of Abraham and uh, heirs according to the promise. It's those who are in Christ. Not those who are of Abraham, but those who are of Christ. So that's one thing. Those are the other things that are at stake. Another thing at stake, and again, this comes up all the time, uh, in discussions like this, is uh, your view of violence versus nonviolence. Uh, if you're a Christian and you are, you believe um, in redemptive violence, you believe in just war theory, then I guarantee you, you appeal to the old covenant scriptures. If you are a Christian and you are nonviolent, I guarantee you, you camp out in the Sermon on the Mount and on the words and commands of Jesus. So that's another reason why I think this this discussion is worth having. Um, Because again, part of this confusion that Christians have about their relationship to the Old Covenant Scriptures, uh, this is one of the byproducts of that. Uh, Because you have to go to the Old Testament to justify violence. Because if you camp out with Jesus, and you just read Jesus, and you just follow Jesus. And if Jesus is your Lord, and Jesus is the one who's setting the course of your life, and you are living your life by the compass of of true north in Jesus, you cannot justify just war theory or violence. You can't. So um, the uh, another reason why I think the the stakes, uh, what's at stake in this conversation, is our uh, the awareness of our identity in Christ. Who, if we are in Christ, what is wrapped up in that? Because again, as I, just, as I just quoted, Paul says, if you're in Christ, you are heirs according to the promise. To what promise? To the same promise God made to Abraham. Heirs, heirs to what? The same things God promised to Abraham. Your identity in Christ, if you understand it correctly, according to the New Testament scriptures, you are one of the Israel of God. You are God's chosen. You are a member of the chosen priesthood, the holy nation of God. And again, if you don't understand that, you think as a you think if you're a Christian, if you accept sort of the messianic view of things, the, the, the Christian Zionist view of the scriptures, you take it as sort of the second class citizen. First class citizens are still the Jewish people, ethnic Jews, who trace their lineage to Abraham and who are circumcised, and who keep the law and the commandments and the festivals and the feasts, and blah, 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 blah. That's the, that's what it, those are the most favored, the most chosen of God. And if you're in Christ and you're a Christian, yeah, you know, that's cool too. 
you're also kind of sort of, yeah, you know, you're in there too somewhere. You're kind of on, you know, you're kind of on the outside edge, but you're in the circle. But that is not what it says in the New Testament. So it's sort of, I want Christians to really understand their full identity in Christ. And that's another thing that's at stake. And I think the other thing that's at stake uh, in this conversation is to clearly understand how God relates to everyone on this planet. Because the Zionist view, the, the Messianic Christian view, suggests that um, God has special favor on ethnic Jews. And everybody else, quote-unquote the Gentiles, again, are second class. That is not what the New Testament tells us. Paul tells us that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, or neither Jew nor Gentile. Now, notice he doesn't say in Christ there are both Jews and Gentiles. Did you catch that? No, Paul tells us something else. We have a new identity that that erases the ethnicity. And it's, it's an identity found only in the blood of Christ, not the blood of Abraham, but in the blood of Christ. And so I, if Christians rightly understand this issue about Israel and what the New Testament and what Jesus and the apostles tell us about Israel, who true Israel is, then they are given a clear understanding of how God relates to everyone on this planet, which is God is no respecter of persons. God does not recognize Jew or Gentile or all these other ethnic identities. He recognizes only those who are in Christ or not in Christ. That's it. And then, of course, I think the last two things I think that matter, uh, why this issue is important, is to have clarity on the Israel-Palestine issue, which is, again, what's going on today. Uh, today is July the 17th, and today uh, Israel... Uh, mounted a ground invasion uh, of Gaza. And there are Christians going, awesome, hallelujah, let's pray for the success of those Israeli soldiers as they go in there door to door, house to house, uh, and blow away these Palestinian people and invade the homes of these people who have lived there for 1,700 years. Um, and by the way, many of them are Christians. There are brothers and sisters in Christ this is what screws up this whole Israel-Palestine uh, discussion, is that Christians in America start cheering when those who deny Christ go in and uh, brutally attack and take away the homes of our brothers and sisters in Christ in Palestine. And we say, awesome, woo! Uh, that's how screwy it is. You know, but if this was going on in any other country... And, and someone said, hey, Christians are being kicked out of their homes and, you know, uh, they're, they're, um, people are being dragged out of their houses and beaten and thrown in jail and shot and their houses are blown up and repossessed, you know, and, and taken away from them. We would say that's injustice. That's pray for those Christian brothers and sisters in that country who are being treated that way unless the country – you know, you fill in the blank of the country and we say that it's happening in Israel and we say that it's the Jewish people doing it to Palestinians, in which case, well, OK, they have the right to do that. But no, they do not have the right to do that. God isn't for that. That is an injustice, no matter who does it. Uh, and then the final thing, the final reason that I believe this is uh, an important issue to understand is the clarity in the whole end times discussion. You know, uh, the whole 70 weeks of Daniel and the, what's going on in the Olivet Discourse and Revelation. And is the Antichrist going to come and the beast and the mark of the beast? And we're going to be, you know, blah, 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 all that whole thing. Because dispensationalism has just, uh, you know, completely indoctrinated most Christians to expect. I mean, it's just an automatic thing. A couple of weeks ago uh, at the motel church, actually. Uh, I couldn't even get through a conversation with with two or three Christians because they just kept going back to the whole thing about, well, you know, these things have got to happen uh, before Jesus can come back, you know. And this is what's also really screwy about dispensationalism is, you know, they'll they say they're pro-Israel. I want you to understand this is this is part of the dispensationalism that's really really screwed up because they'll say they're pro-Israel, right? We love the Jews, and God loves the Jews, 
and we are pro is we're going to send money to Jewish people and we're going to help Jewish people. But understand in dispensationalism's theology that the Antichrist, when he shows up, he is going to make a peace treaty with those Jewish people for seven years, and then he's going to break that treaty in three and a half years, and then he's going to slaughter every Jewish person in Jerusalem. Now, if we are really pro-Jewish, we would be warning those people to get out of Jerusalem. But instead, what we're doing is sending money to send Jews into Jerusalem so that they can buy up more land and take over more property. And we want to cheer them on as they bulldoze uh, Palestinian homes and, and create Israeli settlements and more Jews move into Israel. Why? Well, under a dispensational viewpoint, so that that will you know, speed up the return of Christ. And then, you know, when the Antichrist slaughters all these Jewish people there, and then Jesus comes back and raptures us. So good for us, but bad for who? The Jewish people that we're supposedly really in favor of. Uh, it's just really screwy and um, and very frustrating to me. So I, I would like to, on this podcast, open a dialogue uh, about Israel— and I suppose I will do it anyway. <laughs> uh, maybe the only way it can be done, which is to just talk about it. And if you have questions about it, please let me know. I've already got a whole ton of uh, responses from people who want to correct me of why I'm wrong about this issue and how I'm not really realizing that there's all kinds of other laws that that Paul talked about. And we'll get into that later in, in another podcast. Uh, and I want to address those things. But this is why I think this issue is important. Frankly, it's why I want to write a book that deals with these things, because these things are so important. And again, the thing that's the challenge, the hardest thing, is to write a book or to write a blog or to record a podcast that talks about these issues in a way that I can get people to at least lay down, you know, put the knife down, put the gun down, uh, you know, take a deep breath for a second and just look with the, at me with these scriptures for a little bit. Consider what these things are actually saying. And, and honestly, most Christians that I talk to about this have never actually looked at the scriptures. When I start sharing scriptures with them, uh, like this just happened last week. It was hilarious. So I was in a Facebook conversation. Um, this woman just kept quoting her opinions about stuff. And every one of my answers was just a scripture. I didn't make a comment. I didn't say anything about it. I just quoted the scripture. And then she said something else, and I quoted another scripture. And then she said something something else, basically her opinion, and then I posted another scripture. And then she posted another opinion, and I posted another scripture. And after I did like six or seven scriptures, her reply to me was, Keith, these are teachings of man, not teachings of God. And so I finally jumped in and, and spoke for myself, and I said, you know, ma'am, all I've done is post scriptures with no commentary whatsoever. All you've done is post your opinion about things and no scriptures, you know. So if you're going to call those scriptures the, quote-unquote, the opinion of man, I suppose you're technically correct if you, what you mean is it's the opinion of the man Jesus or the opinion of the man Paul or the apostles. Um, but see what I'm saying? This is how crazy it is, is that you can be in a conversation with somebody and all you're doing is quoting scripture. And at the end, all they can come back to you and say, that's the teaching of man, that's not God's word when all you've done is quote God's word. So it's a little crazy. Again, maybe it is a losing proposition. Maybe they're, Maybe I'm just going to be pounding the sand here and, and uh, beating the air, as Paul said. But uh, I think it's worth having the conversation because maybe, maybe one or two people out there uh, who haven't made up their mind yet, the cement hasn't dried yet on this subject, will at least look at it, examine the scriptures that I'm going to share, and, and who knows, maybe say, you know what, I, I think... I think maybe these scriptures really are saying what it looks like they're they're saying. Um, anyway, so that's what we'll be getting into, I suppose, in the next couple of podcasts here. Thanks for listening. God bless, and let the kingdom come.